excited that God has allowed us one more day in his presence. We bless and praise the name of our God for he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Our God is worthy. Our lives are to be lived in praise and adoration to God. For only the things we do for Christ are going to last. God instructs us in a way that is mighty sweet. But the way that God instructs us requires of us to place our trust in God. Throughout the study of Scripture, we are told to trust in God with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct our path. Trusting is believing God, that God will do anything but fail. Many of us have the evidence in our lives that we can trust God more than we can trust ourselves. And it's good to have that as your faith journey. It's good to know that when your back's up against the wall and you can't see your way, that you can put your hand in God's hand and God will make a way out of no way. On this Father's Day, this day of remembering the great work of fathers, I would have each of you to grow a little, to express more to those who are coming after you that all of their trust, all of their all of their faith has to be in God that makes a way out of no way. In the eleventh chapter of the book of Hebrews, we are we are encouraged as children of God to realize that without faith it is impossible to please God, but with faith all things are possible. We have the evidence in our lives that God will make a way out of no way, that God will bridge our troubled waters, that God will make enemies leave us alone, that God will fight our battles for us. And he says it in an in an unassuming but very important way in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. He says, now faith is the substance of, of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report through faith. We understand that the world was framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen were, were not made of things which do appear by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than gain by faith by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead was speak, speaking by faith. Enoch was translated that, that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before he before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that 
cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek after him. I want to share with you the just some excerpts from the life of one who, who walked by faith. He learned to to trust God in spite of the circumstances that were around him. His father did not know who God was and he was raised in such a way that he did not know. But one day, God made a way out of no way. And I hope and I pray that that's your testimony that, that when, when you was when you was uh, sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard your despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. And nothing else could help. You see, God places in the heart of every individual, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. The love of God that lets him know that he can trust in God with all his heart. Lean not to his own understanding, but in all his ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. You see, knowing God is to believe that God will make a way out of nowhere. And we are living witnesses of what God can do. For when we were out, God brought us in. When we were down, God picked us up. When we couldn't see our way, God made a way. We don't brag on ourselves. But we let men, women, and boys, and girls know that you can't make it without God on your side. Oh, I like the way the song writer said, Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All I can be is a living witness. We are instructed by the life of one who trusted God that God will make a way out of no way. We, we're told in the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis that that after God had already revealed himself to Abram, after God had already made a way out of nowhere, after God had picked him up and turned him around, after God had been a friend that stuck closer than a brother, that Abram turned his back on God. That, that's what we do. God has been good to us. God has open doors that have been closed in our face. God has been a friend when we were friendless. Been a father and a mother. When my mother and my father forsake me, then God took me up. God has been my bridge over troubled waters. And yet when I find myself at the, the place of making a decision for God, or for self. I find myself leaning towards self. We, we sing a song, I've learned how to lean. And it depends on Jesus. We, we have to know that whenever we find ourselves with our backs up against the wall and we can't see our way, trust in God. With all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. Not, and when you find that, that, that you can't hold on to God's unchanging hand, then get back up. Dust yourself off. Start all over again. Say to God, it's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord. That's standing in need of prayer. You see, too many times we cover up or we try to conceal our shortcomings as though 
We are judged by our No, you're not judged by your shortcomings. You are judged whether or not you grow beyond your shortcomings. None of us start out being all that we should be. But our relationship with God should teach us that in all our ways acknowledge Him and He will direct our path. That's in all our ways. That's your good, good ways and the bad ways. That's the good days and your bad days. Acknowledge God and He'll direct your path. Abram in this 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis. Abram, after having a relationship with God, after growing in the grace and knowledge that the Lord provided for him, he was tested. And let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. You will be tested by God. Not tempted, but tested. God never tempts any man, but God tests every man. That's the only way you can grow from, from where you are to where God wants you to be. That's the only way you can learn that God can turn your midnight into midday. God has to, to place his hand on. God has to guide you along the journey. God has to direct your path. And he doesn't do it for you to brag and boast and pretend to be something that you're not. But he does it so that you can let someone else know that without God, they are nothing but with God. All things are possible. God blesses you so that you can be a blessing. To the world in which you live, the more God bless you, the more you are to bless somebody else. Huh? I'm reminded of the song, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You ought to tell everybody that you know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, not because you've been good, but because God is good and God laid his hands on you and God has to take you from where you are and bring you to where he wants you to be. And God wants you to be a living witness of what he can do in the life of one who will Trust him. The songwriter said, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. In that 22nd chapter of the book of, of Genesis, God tests Abraham. God reminds Abraham. That without me, you are nothing. But with me, all things are possible. And that's what God will do. God will tell you to take that that you love. Lay it on the altar. And give it to God. God, God, God raises you up. So that you can take the things that you would give your life for and give it to God. Let him use it. You see, if you allow God to use you, then you allow God to use anyone you love. And behold, God did tempt Abraham. And said unto Abram, and he said, Behold, I'm here. And he said, Take thy son, 
thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. His son Abram was a hundred years old before he and Sarah conceived and had a son. They named the son Isaac. The son name indicates that God looked beyond their faults and supplied their needs. That God made a way out of no way that God bridged your trouble waters that God they didn't just leave them alone. Sarah, you ought to read it sometimes. She, she was under constant scrutiny from Ishmael's mother who made her feel bad because she was unable to bear Abram a son. But what she did, she had a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about her struggles. He heard her faintest cry. He answered by and by. God, God wanted to use Abram and Sarah to let the world know that there's no secret what God can do. God can bless your neighbor. God can bless you too. God gave them a son. And now God, God comes and he tells Abram, I want you to take that son, your only son, to the mountain called Moriah. And there I want you to offer him up to me a sacrifice. I, I, I love the way Abram. He doesn't exchange words. He doesn't argue with God. He doesn't argue with his wife. Abram sets his, his focus on God. Now, see, Abram already figured it out. That God gave him a son in spite of the physical condition and if God wanted to that God could raise his son to life even though God had asked him to give his life to him you see faith is not a matter of, of what you say faith is a matter of what you do God asked him to present his son. That's a beautiful picture. Abram tells his servants as he approaches the mountain top, he says, you stay here and me and my son will come, come later. Abram had so much confidence in God that Abram could say to his servants that me and my son will return later, but you remain where you are. You see, there's some things that God, God only wants you to, to understand. It wasn't for anyone to understand at that time, other than Abram, because God wanted to, to test him, to see if he is faithful. Here it is. If you are faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over many. And some glad morning when this life is over, God's going to ask you, what did you do? with the gifts that I gave you. Did you help someone along the way? Did you cheer someone? Did you pick somebody up? Did you turn somebody? Did you let somebody know that 
I am in the gifting business. That you can take your gift and give to God. And though it may not look like much, if you place it in the hands of God, God is able to take it, mold it, shape it, make it into what He wants it to be. So that you can give God the glory for what God has done. Abram took Isaac, his son. Isaac wasn't so old. He was a, a, not a, a child. And Isaac feared that his father had gotten past the point of being able to remember all the requirements for sacrifice. Isaac says to his father, I see the, the wood, I see the, I see the fire, but where is the lamb? Abraham didn't know. But God specified at the time, God will supply himself a lamb. The test was not whether Abram was able to offer Isaac. The test was whether Abram was able to, to understand that God would give his best in order to secure our soul salvation. Abram took Isaac, laid him on the altar, took the knife and was ready to stab his son to death. God stayed his hand. There was a ram caught in the thicket. And God told him to get the ram because God will supply himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that when I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea. Heard my despairing cry and from the water he lifted me. Now say, am I love? Lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else would help. Love lifted me. God provided himself. Oh, man, and I blend my voice in with the song. Well, Jesus paid it all. All to him. I, oh, sin has left a crimson stain, but he's washed it. Whiter than snow. I'm so glad that God told Abram that God will supply himself a lamb. A lamb, a sacrifice for for your sins and mine, a lamb, a sacrifice that, that has no, no spot or blemish. God will supply himself a lamb. And one day, one day, the question will be asked of you. What did you do? With the opportunity that I gave you, my thoughts, my prayers, my hopes, that on that day you'll be able to say, Lord, I took what you had, what you gave me. I used it so that someone else would know that there's a God somewhere and don't you rest until you. I use what you gave me to the best of my ability. 
so that men, women, boys, and girls everywhere will know the same God that made a way for me. He's available to make a way for you. This is my hopes, this is my prayers that on this Father's Day that we pass on to our sons and sons that are not of our loin that there's a way that is mighty sweet and the only way that you can come to know that the sweet way of life is to put your hands in God's hands weeping may endure for a night But joy comes in the morning. And some glad morning when this life is over. I fly away. Be with God. And be in rest. May God bless you. May he keep you ever is my prayers. Mm -hmm.